G'day guys, today I'm going to show you how easy it is to install a really high quality dual battery system into your vehicle with the Adventure Kings Mark II DC-DC charger, now with lithium charging capability. Now every setup is going to be different, but here's a bit of a basic idea of the tools and components you'll need to get this install done. The first thing you're going to need is your DC-DC charger. Then in order to run power from your starter battery back to the unit, you're going to need some heavy duty cable. Now you can buy a wiring kit that makes this whole job a lot easier because the wires are pre-terminated and there's a fuse and fuse hold up built in. Or you can go out and just buy some bare cable. The other thing you'll need is some lighter duty cable for your ignition wiring. Plus you'll need some heat shrink, some terminals, some fuses and fuse holders to connect the whole system up. To mount everything down, you're gonna need some nuts, bolts and washers, plus some cable ties to run the cable neatly. Of course, you're gonna need your second battery this DC-DC charger is compatible with lithium, AGM, calcium batteries, and flooded lead acid. Depending on your setup will depend on what tools you require. We're just using some basic sockets and spanners, some Allen keys, plus we've got some 12 volt tools, some wire cutters and crimpers, plus we've got a test light. Depending on how you're mounting everything, you might need a drill, and we're actually gonna use an Adventure Kings 12 volt control box, which makes this whole setup a lot easier to install. Now the first thing I'm gonna do for this setup is actually install the DC-DC charger onto the 12 volt control box and hook it up to the terminals inside. Now that's really easy because all these wires are color coded. Now this first wire is your temperature sensor that actually goes to the earth terminal of your battery. If it doesn't reach your battery, don't cut it. It's really important to the unit and it actually won't function if this has been cut. So if it's not gonna reach your battery, roll it up and put it aside. This small gray wire needs to be connected to positive power if you're running a lithium. The orange wire is for AGM batteries. The yellow wire is for flooded lead acid. And the white wire is for calcium batteries. The small blue wire is your ignition sense wire. So that's needed if you have a smart alternator or you just wanna get the most out of your unit. If you have the 25 amp model with the built-in solar regulator, your green wire is your solar input. The black wire is your common earth for the unit. The red wire will come from your starter battery and the brown wire will send power to your second battery. Now, if you're mounting this directly into your vehicle as is, it'd just be a matter of connecting the red wire, for example, directly to your power lead that goes to your starter battery. I'm gonna install it onto the 12 volt control box, which gives us all these power options. And we've got terminals inside, which make it a lot easier. The steps are pretty much the same, so follow along. These are pre-wired inside and they've been set up and designed for a DC-DC charger. Use a three millimeter Allen key to unscrew the lid. Now inside this 12 volt control box, you've got these three terminals, which make it so easy to install your DC-DC charger. Connecting your black wire up to this one, your red wire up to this one, and your brown wire up to this one means you can connect your two batteries on separate terminals and you're pretty much ready to go. We've designed an empty space here so the DC-DC charger fits on, and there's a grommet so you can run all your wiring to the inside of the box. Now you're gonna to need to add an eye terminal to the end of this, so it'll fit onto those terminals. And depending on where you mount this charger, you'll need to extend the wiring as well. I'm using a hydraulic crimping tool with correctly sized jaws and crimp terminals to ensure a quality connection. You can pick these tools up from around 50 bucks. Then make sure you add heat shrink to protect the joint and prevent short circuits. So I've extended out that earth cable by using a crimp here to join the two wires, and then a crimp with an M10i terminal at the end, and it's got plenty of length now. I'll do the same thing now for the red wire and the brown wire. Now I've extended those three wires and added eye terminals on the end, so it'll really easily connect up inside the 12 volt control box. The next thing I'm gonna do is extend this green wire out. The reason you do that is because inside the control box, you can really easily connect this up to one of the quick connect plugs on the front, which makes it super simple to plug your solar in. Right, so I've extended that green wire out and that's the solar input wire. And instead of using an eye terminal on this one, I'm gonna use a spade terminal. And I'll show you why once we get it in the box. Now that I've extended all those thicker wires, it's time to mount the DC-DC charger to the front of the 12 volt control box. Now, if you do need to open up this hole to fit all your wiring in, a great tip is to remove the grommet that's fitted and grab one from the side of the 12 volt control box that you're not gonna need as they're a lot bigger. 
Then you use a step drill and just drill that out. Clean up any mess or swarf before you move on. Once you've sorted out your grommet, it's time to position your DC DC charger, feed all the wiring in to ensure that it's gonna reach those terminals, then you can mark it up and drill the mounting holes. So once it's through, you just need to check that all your wiring is gonna reach those terminals. So we've got our negative here, our starter battery here, we've got our auxiliary or second battery terminal here, perfect. And our solar input, we'll check that it fits up onto this quick connect plug. Perfect. Right, so now that we know they fit, it's just a matter of marking up where we want to drill these holes. Now I'm just going to pull the wiring back out so I can easily drill those holes. I've just grabbed these little nuts and bolts, and that's what I'm going to use to mount down through the top of the control box. So I've grabbed the right size drill bit, and I'm going to drill these four holes out. Again, make sure you clean up any mess or swarf. With those four holes drilled, it's just a matter of feeding your wires back through the grommet and then mounting your DC-DC charger to the face of the control box. Once that DC-DC charger is tightly mounted, you can work on the wiring. So we've got our brown wire, our red wire, our black wire and our green solar wire. First up, we'll take the brown wire and connect it to this terminal. Next, grab your red wire and connect it to this empty terminal here. Your black wire will connect up to this earth terminal. And your green solar wire will connect up to this quick connect plug using the spade terminal. Now I'm going to add a piece of heat shrink on here to hold them together. Now just to reiterate, our brown wire has gone to this terminal, our red wire has gone to this terminal, and our black wire has gone to this terminal. And I've just put them on top and finger tighten them because we're gonna to have to add extra wiring to all three of these. And that's the point when we'll put the washer and the nut in the correct position. As for this solar wire, we've connected it up to this quick connect plug, which leaves us with this tail end. Now we're not gonna let that go to waste. Because you have to connect up one of these wires, depending on your battery type, you can actually use this as the input. Now in this vehicle, we're using an AGM. So we're gonna to need to connect up this orange wire. If you were using lithium, you'd connect up the gray wire. I'm gonna cut this cable tie, connect this to the orange, and then cable tie it back up. So this is the same process as before. Take your time, crimp everything together, and use heat shrink to protect it. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of the wiring, plus I'm gonna terminate the white, gray, and yellow wires as they're not needed for this install, so we just need to keep them protected. Now the last thing you're left with is this blue wire and that's your ignition wire for if you have a smart alternator or an eco type alternator or if you just want to get the most out of your DC DC charger with the correct charging pattern. Now you'll need to extend this blue wire out to reach a 12 volt ignition source. That's power when your vehicle's on. Some dual cabs and wagons might have a 12 volt outlet in the back of the vehicle that's only on when your vehicle's on and that's perfect, you can hook into that. Otherwise, you might have to find something in the fuse box in the vehicle or something behind the dash. So make sure you grab enough cable for your use, plus you'll need a small fuse as well. Now in my D-Max, I'm gonna run this blue wire from the fuse box under the bonnet. So to make it easier, I'm gonna run it along with my main power cables that are coming from my starter battery. So I'm still needing to connect this up to this blue wire, but I'm gonna do it once this 12 volt control box and DC charger are actually installed in the vehicle. We'll come back to this. Now the fun part, actually mounting the 12 volt control box. Again, this is gonna be different for every setup, but I'm gonna sit this one about here. The first thing we're gonna do is mark it out, drill those holes. Now I've made this little 12 volt enclosure that I'm gonna mount the box to, and I know that there's nothing on the back side I need to worry about, so I can drill straight through and mount to that. So that makes it really easy. I'm just gonna pick four spots on the inside of this 12 volt control box, mark them and drill them, and then use this as the template to mark out my holes and drill through here. That way the holes will line up first go, and it's super easy. Now that the DC-DC charger and 12 volt control box are solidly mounted in your vehicle, you're gonna have to finish running all the power cables. That means running power from your starter battery and then power to your deep cycle battery. Now because my deep cycle battery is underneath here and my control box is right here, it's easier for me to run that one first. So I'm just gonna roughly measure up how much of this cable I need to reach from those terminals through the control box underneath here and through to the deep cycle battery. 
So that's about right. I've added just a little bit of extra length so I'm not caught short. Now we're gonna cut this and add some terminals. Now to make the wiring that's gonna run from your second battery through to your 12 volt control box and DC-DC charger is super simple. What you're gonna need is some heat shrink and eye terminals for both ends. In this case, I'm using M10s on this end as that's what's inside the control box. And on this end, I'm using M8s as it's an Adventure Kings AGM deep cycle battery and that's what size the threads are on top, so it's super easy. Over here with my fuse and fuse holder, I'm using M6s as they'll fit directly on those threads. Then it's just a matter of connecting it all up and fitting it in. Again, make sure your wires are properly crimped with heat shrink to protect the joints and circuit. All right, we're done. Now notice I've left that 50 amp fuse out of the fuse holder because while we're installing it into the vehicle, we don't want it to be live. Let's get into it. I've cut this hole here, so I'm gonna feed the two wires with the M10 terminals up through the bottom of this control box and connect them up to the earth for the black wire and the second post here that's connected up to the brown wire on the DC charger and connected up to the 12 volt control box itself. After that, I'm just gonna run this temperature sensor wire down through the grommet in the control box, through this hole and over to the negative terminal of the battery as well. Now that we've finished wiring up the auxiliary battery in the back of the vehicle, it's time to think about the starter battery and how we're gonna connect that to our DC-DC charger. So we do need to run our ignition wiring, so we've got it here. Plus, we're gonna to need to run our main power cables. Whether you're using a pre-made kit or you've made your own by adding terminals and a fuse like we've done before, the first thing you need to do is disconnect your earth or black terminal from your battery so nothing's connected while you're working. Whichever of these two wiring options you're going with, make sure you also pull the fuse out of these as well so there's no chance anything will arc out while you're working. Then it's just a matter of connecting the positive and negative terminals to the battery. Red to red, black to black. I've connected up the positive and negative main power leads to the terminals on the battery, but I haven't actually connected the earth terminal to the battery yet, so it's still not live. Now the next thing we need to do is actually connect the ignition wire, which is really important even if you have an older vehicle that doesn't have a smart alternator because it ensures that the DC-DC charger is always charging so long as your vehicle's running. You don't have to worry about voltages. So the way I'm gonna do this is actually tap it in to a fuse in the fuse box, which is I think the easiest way to connect these up. Now the idea is that you'll find a circuit that has power while the vehicle's running or while the ignition is on. That way when you turn your vehicle off, your DC-DC charger disconnects and isolates your two batteries. Super easy way to do that is with a test light. Connect the negative and then use the positive probe to check some of the fuses to see one that's live while the vehicle is on and doesn't have power while the vehicle's off. Now that I've found a fuse that has power when the vehicle's running or the ignition's on and doesn't have power when the vehicle's off, I can use one of these handy little double adapters to actually plug in and then connect up my ignition wire. This works by allowing the original circuit in the fuse box to retain its original fuse and continue working as per usual, but you can add a second little circuit on here, which basically draws no power and allows the DC-DC charger to run much more effectively. Now make sure you put heat shrink on this joint to keep it neat and tidy and protected. And of course, you don't need to use one of these double adapters into your fuse box. You could find an ignition source behind the dash, or as I said earlier, in the rear of your vehicle, if that makes it easier. But this way is pretty simple. So I'm gonna pull out this existing fuse that I've already identified. I'm gonna plug it into my double adapter and then plug the whole double adapter back into the fuse box, then replace the lid. So that fuse box lid is back on and now I'm gonna follow my main power leads with this blue lead so they follow the same route underneath the vehicle. Of course, every vehicle's different, but make sure you route your cables out of the way, away from anything moving or hot and ideally use some corrugated tubing to give it an extra layer of protection and a couple of cable ties along the length of your vehicle will keep it tucked up and out of the way. So I've run my wiring from the starter battery underneath the vehicle, put some corrugated tubing on it and cable tied it up out of the way. My last three wires I need to connect, this blue one needs to connect to the blue wire on the back of the DC-DC charger. My red one from the starter battery here connects to this middle terminal post and the black one obviously to the black terminal post at the top. So let's get into it. As always, protect your crimp joints with heat shrink, then ensure you arrange the terminals, then the washer, then the nut, so everything can be tightened up securely. 
Now, all the wiring inside our 12 volt control box and associated with the Adventure King's DC-DC charger is all connected now and ready to go. But what I'm gonna suggest is that we now refit our fuses and actually test that everything's working before we put the front of the 12 volt control box back on. If everything checks out, we're ready to button it up and we're done. So the LED up the top shows that the second battery or deep cycle battery is connected. The LED next to car shows that your starter battery is connected. And the LED next to AGM indicates that we set it up for an AGM battery. Now that everything's working, let's tighten up the lid. The Adventure King's Mark II DC-DC charger is installed and functioning perfectly. We even managed to install it onto this 12 volt control box which makes it look so neat and tidy and makes the install that much easier. If you do have the 25 amp model like we have here, then you'll note that we did connect that solar input to this quick connect plug, which means you can plug your solar panel or solar blanket directly in without a regulator and this will do all the work for you. So if you're driving or you're sitting at camp with your solar panel set up, you can rely on the Adventure King's Mark II DC-DC charger to keep your batteries fully charged all the time. If you want to learn more about the Adventure King's DC-DC chargers, then make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the rest of the channel.